This is video number seven from Digital Dash University in our um, series on um, linear algebra. And in this video, we want to consider how to multiply matrices together. And here we have the formal definition. What we we'll do is just go ahead, delve in multiply two matrices together, then afterwards show that what we have done indeed comports with what the formal definition is. So here we have two square matrices that we're going to multiply together. So what we do is to get the very first number, first number in the first column in the first row is we go to this row go across this row and down that first column, first row and first column. So here we have 4 times 2 is 8, plus 4 is 12, and that's 0. So this first number is 12. Now what comes beneath it, how we determine that number is we go to the second row, go all the way across and down the first column again. So here we have 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6 and that's 0. So that gives us a 6. Then to get the third number here in the column we take the third row, go across the third row with the first column. So here we have negative 4 plus negative 2, that's negative 6, plus negative 1, that's negative 7. Now, to get the next number here, to get the second column number in the first row of the matrix, we go back with the first row here, go across, only now we go down the second column. So here we have 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4 is 8, that's 0. So the first, so this next entry is 8. Now to get the, the next entry beneath that, we go across the second row with the second column. So here we have 3 times 2 is 6. Here we have minus 2, that's 4. And then here we have going across and here, that's 0, so that gives us 4. Now we continue then with the third row and the second column. So here we have now 3 times negative 2, that's negative 6, that's plus 2, that's negative 4, that's plus 2, that leaves us with minus 2. And we continue on in like manner here. Now, to get this number, we go back to the first row, go across the first row and down the third column. Here we have 4 times 1 is 4, minus 4 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, that gives us a 0 here. Continuing along, now we go across the second row with the third column. 2 times 1 is 2, this is negative 2, that's 0, and that's 0. Again, we have 0. And finally, for the last number, go across the third row and down the third column. Here we have negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2, that's plus 2, that's 0. 1 times 1 is 1. That gives us 1. And that's the answer there. Now, 
As you can see, it's just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. But with what we just did, what does that have to do with this up here? Well, first thing we want to realize is we have IJ, IK, KJ. The first letter refers to the row. The second number refers to the column. So here, for example, this is 1, 1. So that means I equals 1, J equals 1. So what we do then is we look at this and we say, well, I is going to be 1. So let's just go down to here. So we have A. I is 1. So we have 1, K. Now over here then we have B, K, J, or B, K, 1. And what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to add these going from k equal 1 to 3. So let's see what we have. This is our matrix A, and this is matrix B. So here, 1 indicates I'm in the first row. So we're in the first row, and then k goes from 1, 2, 3. So I go first column, second column, third column. Now here's the B matrix. This means I'm in the first column now. So here's the first column. This is a row, and the rows are going from 1, 2, 3. So I'm going down 1, 2, 3. So to get this first number, I go across the first row and down the first column, multiply and add them up, which is exactly what we did, and we got 12. Now to get this number, 6, here we have, we are in the second row in the first column. So this would correspond to I will equal 2, the second row, but we're in the first column, so J equals 1. So now we go back to our formula right here. Only now we have I equals 2, J equals 1. So we have 2, K, K, 1. So what does that mean? Well, for matrix A, I'm in the second row. K goes from 1 to 3. Those are the columns. We go first column, second column, third column. Meanwhile, here for vector B, I'm in the first column. K goes from 1 to 3, so I go down these different rows. So I go across the column, down the rows, multiply and add, and that's how we got the 6, doing exactly the same thing. And we just keep following the procedure over and over again. So that really is the gist behind of what's involved with matrix uh, multiplication. Now, one thing that you learn is that when you multiply two matrices together, in general, it is not commutative. And we can just see that. It's just a simple example. We don't have to completely multiply it out. Let's say that we have just this, 2, 3, um, say 4, 5, here's one matrix, and I'm going to multiply by, say this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I multiply these together, the first thing I do is I go across this row, down that column. Now if I have the matrices reversed, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so here 
I have 2 times 1 plus 3 times 3. Here I have 2 times 1, but I have 4 times 2. That's 8, not the same numbers. This going across and down, that's 2 plus 9. That's 11. This going across and down, that's 2 plus 8. That's 10. It gives us a different number for our first entry. So matrices, uh, when you multiply matrices together, it's not commutative. It makes a difference in which order you do it. Um, also, one other thing to point out. Remember how our definition was. We had A, I, K, B, K, J, summing from K. And we said from 1 to 3 because we were demonstrating with a 3 by 3 matrix. Um, this doesn't have to be 3, of course. This could just go up to any number n. But what's important here is this is the number of columns in our first matrix. This is the number of rows in our second matrix. So the matrices don't have to be square matrices, but the number of columns in our first matrix has to be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So for example, suppose we had this. OK, this has one, two, three, columns. So I could multiply it by, say, this matrix. This has one, two, three columns. This has one, two, three rows. So I can multiply these together even though they're not square matrices. And what we would get is go across and down. Minus 6 plus 2, that's minus 4, plus 3, that's negative 1. Now to get the number beneath that, we take Across the second row with that first column, here we have 12 plus 2 is 14 plus 6 is 20. Now to get the next number, again back to the first row, only now the second column. Here we have minus 2 times minus 2 is 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 9, that's negative 1. And finally, for our last entry, cross this row down this column. Here we have negative 8 plus 4, that's minus 4. And then here we have negative 18, that would be minus 22. And that would be the multiplication for those. One other thing that we alluded to in one of the previous videos is that when you're multiplying matrices, you can have an identity element. For example, let's just suppose we had a 2 by 2 matrix. like this. These can be any entries, but I'm going to multiply a matrix that looks like this. 1, 0, 0, 1. On the diagonals, we have 1. Everywhere else, it's 0. What happens if we multiply these together? I go across and down. This gives me A11. That's 0. To get the number beneath it, I go across and down. 
that gives me a 2 1 that's 0 okay to get this number we go across and down this column that's 0 that gives me a 1 2 and finally across this row down this column that zero that gives a two two we get the same thing if this was a three by three matrix we get it like this and one more row then the identity matrix for the 3x3 three three matrix is again the diagonals are 1 everything else is 0 and that's the identity matrix and what we're going to be uh, discussing not in the next video but after the next two videos again going back to non-singular matrices is that you can have a matrix and you can multiply it by its if it's non-singular this is a an n by n all non-singular matrices are square matrices an n by n non-singular matrix it has unique solutions it will have an inverse so that when you multiply any non-singular matrix by its inverse it gives you the identity matrix and we'll discuss this more in future videos because you can use this type of thinking to solve for the inverse of that matrix and again we'll discuss that in more detail in future videos okay that's it for this video um, in the next video we just want to sort of um, touch briefly on linear independence, bases, dimensions, um, determinants, um, just kind of mention the basic properties of all of them, so hopefully we can get to some more interesting material. Anyway, come back, turn us for some more videos, and soon we'll try to get to solving some more problems.